Good morning from Kiev, the Ukraine. I know it's evening, nighttime in, uh, in the United States, and it's already morning in Europe and in Israel and uh, midday in Asia. Uh, just to give you a very short update on um, events that uh, took place over the last 24 hours in regards to Israel, Syria, Iran, Russia, and the United States. This is a very important development because up until now, we were only talking about um, <clears throat> about the uh, presence of the Iranians, but nobody admitted that they are there. Uh, nobody said, uh, nobody verified. It was the Israeli military intelligence assessment. Uh, well, we we uh, we knew that they are there, but um, the other side never really verified that. And all of that was until yesterday when the Russian foreign minister, uh, Sergei Lavrov, literally publicly announced that the Iranians in Syria are actually a legitimate force to keep the stability of Syria. In, not, not only that, he said, anything we talk with Washington about the uh, removal or the, um, <clears throat> the clearing of Syria from non-Syrian um, uh, forces does not apply to Iranians and Iranian-backed um, um, forces. Uh, and, um, and the reason why I'm saying that is that this is the, the coupon that the Iranians just uh, cut right now for aligning with the Russians. Right now, officially, politically, um, the, the Russians are admitting that there are Iranians on the ground and that this is with their full approval. Now, why is it a, a game changer? If up until now, Israel had to deal with Russia in what we call um, the um, <clears throat> uh, under-the-radar communications, where we would tell them that we will have to do what we need to do in order to keep our, our borders safe. Now, once the Russians are telling the whole world, Iran is in Syria with our approval. Now it's going to be very hard, if, if anything, almost impossible for Israel to go and attack any Iranian base in Syria. Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday, in uh, a direct, uh, I guess, uh, uh, reaction to the uh, Russian declaration, said Israel will do what Israel will uh, um, have to do in order to take care of its security, even if it means that we're going to do it all by ourselves. Prime Minister Netanyahu is laying the foundations of a future force conflict on Israel as a result of the Russian approval for the Iranians to be in Syria. Let me make it very clear, because I know that uh, a lot of people don't understand uh, what really is going on there. There is a civil war in, in Syria for the last six, seven years. More than almost, almost a million people died in this whole thing. And in the midst of all of that, Russia invaded in, Iran invaded in, Turkey invaded in, and Russia is now calling the shots in the whole region, telling the world that the Iranian-Turkish collaboration is necessary with Russia, yeah, is necessary for the stability of Syria, and is now telling the whole world that Iranian presence in Syria is actually something that is with the full approval of the Kremlin. Now, why is it so important for Bible-believing Christians? Watch this. Now, it's no longer, uh, you know, maybe, could be, possibly. It's a fact. Russia and Turkey and Iran are on the ground. They're saying they're not going anywhere. And they're challenging anyone who says that that's not a legitimate presence in Syria. And they're actually saying, the Russians are saying, if you guys come against Iran, you have business with us. This 
is amazing. Why is it so amazing? Because if tomorrow Israel will attack Damascus because of the, Russia, the, Iranian, the accumulation of Iranian forces and weaponry, then we have business with Russia. If up until now the Russians turned blind eye and allowed us to do what we need to do, and by the way, the Russians, they think Israel exaggerates when, when, with its worries from Iran. The Russians don't understand anything about the Iranian ideology. <clears throat> All the Russians see is dollar signs. They see a pos a, an opportunity to finally enjoy the price they, they've been looking for uh, for the whole seven years or the last three years they're there. The Russians understand now it's time to cash the check. Now it's time to enjoy when, when it's getting more and more stable in Syria. We can enjoy now the gas and the oil and, and business with Iran and business. Now we're not going to let anyone share that prey with us. We're not going to let the Americans spoil the party. We're not going to let the Israelis do anything. We are just going to um, make, make it very clear. We call the shots here. And so the Russians are basically um, going to most likely, if Israel will do anything, the Russians will intervene and possibly in the near future lead an assault on Israel. They're there. And all of that is to tell every Bible believer around the world, we've never, ever in the history of planet Earth, never been so close to Ezekiel's war. Never, ever. And again, I'm not a prophet. I, I can't tell you, you know, when the rapture is going to take place. But I can tell you one thing. I can tell you that I believe that there is a good possibility that the rapture will even take place before Ezekiel's war or maybe right then. And which, which means that we're... We're really seeing the finish line for us. And that brings me to a message that I'm working on right now. A message on run the race. I believe with all of my heart that we are called to run a race. A lot of Christians don't understand that. They don't understand this is not a time to sit and watch as a spectator. This is the time to run the race. And uh, I'm going to explain what type of race is it that we're called to run? How is it that we are supposed to run? Is it just to run for the sake of running? Or is it running for the sake of winning? Winning a prize. And what is the prize? And how do we prepare ourselves? How do we train to run that run uh, effectively? And is it possible to run all of this run in vain? Because Paul says, I'm afraid to run all of this in vain. In other words, we can uh, play Christianity and just pretend to run the race, but not really do it effectively. So I'm going to deal with all of that. I'm working on that message. The Lord really spoke to me. I have a whole list of things that I will tackle uh, regards, uh, regarding that one. And I think the first time I'm, I will give that message is in uh, the Philippines in January, maybe even earlier. But what I do want you to, to all, all to know is that this is the time, now it's the time, not to fall, asleep as, uh, to fall asleep as others do. It's time to awake out of sleep. For now, the Bible says in Romans 13, now our redemption, the redemption of our body is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. That means we're still at night. We're still at the kingdom of darkness, but it's far spent. The day is at hand, the Bible says. The day is at hand. That means for us, the sons of the day, not the sons of the night, the day is at hand. That which we are part of. The Bible says we are citizens of heaven, not here. So the, if we're sons of the day and the day is at hand, that, and then the citizenship that we have is in heaven, to say that the day is at hand means our redemption of the body, our rapture, our real destination is at hand. And this is why it's so important that we understand that whenever we talk about the, the, the development all around the world, we don't, we're not newscasters. That's not my point. I, I'm not here to give you news. 
I'm here to ring the bells and make people understand that not only the Bible is so accurate and so precise and so uh, uh, reliable and authentic, but also the Bible is giving us a chance right now to choose life and to choose to walk in the light and to and to get ready and to run the race the bible says run the race with endurance not 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 with um depression not willing to give up no endurance i mean there's some you know, in the near future, some terrible things coming up. I mean, the world is going the wrong direction. Look around you. But the Bible says that um, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's Hebrews 12. So we need to remember that the race has to be run with our eyes fixed elsewhere. Fixed, you know, where do you normally run? When you run, where do you run to? to towards your destination. I mean, you're not, you're not running a race looking back. You're running a race looking forward. And when the Bible says that we should run the race and we should look at Jesus. Where is he right now? He's in heaven. So what is our destination? Heaven. So what is the finish line? Heaven. And what are the possibilities for us reaching heaven? Either we fall asleep, we die as believers, or we are raptured. And individuals fall asleep. But as a co collective, all of us, whenever he talks about going to, to see him and to fix our eyes on him, it's going to be the rapture of the church. So I want to encourage all of you um, here from, from Kiev, Ukraine. I'm here for uh, some preparation for ministry stuff that we do um, that required me to be here for two days. And then I will be going to Croatia to speak in three different places. But from Europe, from from this area, um, and no matter where you are all around the world, the bells are ringing. God is, is on the move. He's allowing things to happen. Things that he, the Bible says um, that he declares the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Which means God declares from ancient times, from 2,800 years ago, things that are not yet done. Which is the very near future. So I want to encourage all of you, uh, be strong, run the race, finish it. Because I don't think we have the luxury of not finishing it. And now, especially now when we see the finish line, when we, when we see that... Uh, as you, it, when you run a race towards the very finish line, there's normally a lot of people. And think about Hebrews 12, cloud of witnesses. Those are the people at the finish line. The cloud of witnesses. Now when we have this cloud of witnesses, let us just run this race, looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So again, very big news in the Middle East regarding Russia and Iran. Israel is getting ready. Israel is actually telling the world we're going to do whatever it takes to defend ourselves. <clears throat> and with all of that, we can see a pretty passive approach of the United States, which fits the Bible very well. And we see passive approach from Europe. And we see that the only active ingredients in the whole picture are the ingredients, are the participants in the Ezekiel account in chapter 38 and 39. Amazing times. I am excited. I want you to be excited. Don't be afraid. You know, Jesus said, in this world you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer, he said, for I have overcome this world. So from Kiev, Ukraine, um, I want to bless all of you, wherever you are, keep the faith um, write to us subscribe to our email um, go to our website beholdisrael.org and add your email address so we can be in touch with you and um, thank you for more than 100,000 followers on Facebook 
um, on Instagram, I'm Behold Israel, one word, please follow. So you can see pictures from wherever I go and wherever I teach. And also, of course, on um, <clears throat> our YouTube channel, we're crossing the 57,000 subscribers, but I, I want to increase our subscribers on, on, on YouTube in case Facebook will act up and, and, and will maybe even eventually shut us down. So please, YouTube is Behold Israel. Many people are asking me, Amir, how come um, your videos are on so many different other channels? Well, it's, it's not illegal to take my videos and to put them on other channels, but it's immoral to take my videos and edit them to say something completely different and also put the wrong dates. So if you want to stick to what I really say and the time I really say that, then don't watch any other channel but Behold Israel. This is the only Facebook, excuse me, YouTube channel that we have. That's the official YouTube channel. We have one in Japanese, we're opening right now, one in, in Spanish, but Behold Israel, that's the channel you want to subscribe to. Thank you, God bless you, and shalom. Goodbye, bye-bye. Hey everyone, um, I hope you're doing well. Um, so I got a word from the Lord today and I wanted to share it with you. Um, <clears throat> please bear with me.